Jim. Good to see you. Hey, buddy. Good to see you again, Jim. All right. So I see you in all sorts of weather events. Hurricane force winds, driving rain. But you don't like lightning. I don't. You don't get a second chance with lightning. I mean, uh, that is my biggest fear out there. No question about it. On average, in the United States, 25 million strikes from the cloud to the ground per year. Wow. That's a lot. That is a yeah, lot of strikes. Yeah. Now, I think of lightning um, as something that happens often with summer storms. Is that correct? Year round. Year I've, round. Been, I've been in four situations where, while it's a blinding snowstorm, we've gotten lightning. So, thunder snow. Well, maybe you shouldn't hang out in so much weather. <laughs> maybe that's what it is. So, what's actually going on? What are the physics of lightning strikes? It's all about charges and breaking what's keeping that charge apart, and mm. that essentially is the air. So let's say this is the cloud, you've got all these ice crystals, rising air motion, kind of building this charge, and my hand is going to be the ground or a person or a house or whatnot. I'm gonna to touch this and break the charge, mm. and boom. And by breaking the charge, you're really making a connection. It's almost like completing a circuit in the electrical wiring in your oh, house. Oh, but on so much a bigger scale. I mean, yeah. you're talking about something that's five times the temperature of the sun, 50,000 degrees Fahrenheit, plus, let's say, about 300 million volts. Okay, so this is why you don't mess around with lightning. That's why I don't play with lightning. Perfect, all right. So what's the best way to stay safe? I mean, what do we do when lightning is near? Simple, when thunder roars, go indoors. It's really that simple. I mean, start running if you're in an open field. Don't crouch down in a position. Don't do that 30-30 thing. Everyone confused by that, just get out of harm's way, whether it be a car or inside a building. That protects you from the light. So that's how we protect the people, but we do know that the houses can get struck, and Roger, you're actually working on a story on how we protect our homes from lightning. When you work outside like I do every day, you're aware of lightning. When you see the damage it can cause, you are really aware of lightning. That's bad. This, these wires and pots are from a house that suffered a full strike and a fire. Take a look at this GFI outlet, completely melted. Cable TV line, gone. Look at this wire. This is amazing that it melted it like this. Hmm. And that's not even the worst part. In this case, the electrician has to go back and rip out all the old wire and replace it all. Because if this is left in the wall, it could cause another problem down the road. I've lost some electronics in a lightning strike, but that wasn't direct, was it? No, this is a direct strike. Now, the, we've been getting a lot of emails from people in Central Florida on how to protect their homes. That doesn't surprise me. This is the lightning capital of the country. You've got a state that's surrounded by water. On any given day, June, July, and August, the sun heats that land. It causes the air to rise. That pulls in the cooler ocean water. That's what we call a sea breeze. Thunderstorms form on that on both sides of the state, and they usually converge over the central part of the state. So you can get just about one of every three days with lightning in Florida. Mm -hmm.